Okay, so let's uh, um, now uh, wrap up our discussion on information data and modeling uh, via Octave with this uh, lesson on Octave uh, uh, and its use for scripting. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to uh, talk about programming using scripts and then I'm going to describe the group lab activity based on Octave uh, which is going to be function discovery. So let's begin with uh, programming using scripts and describe what a script is. So a script in any programming language is a computer program that is run by calling the file name. Right? So you are of course used to clicking on, on applications and that runs an, uh, an application. So you may click on an icon, you may type the name of the program from command line or uh, there are other ways to, to run an application. Well, basically what you're running is a computer program. And that's what we're going to learn to do here, starting from the most simplest type of scripts uh, in which um, you are executing a series of instructions in a sequential manner uh, using Octave, right? So, so far we've been using the command line <coughs> to uh, carry out all our, uh, all our experiments with Octave. And um, it turns out that the steps that you write on the command line can actually be written into a file and that can be created as a, as a script and that can be run by one sentence uh, which is the file name and it runs all the, uh, all the commands that you entered through the command line. Okay? So what our goal is going to be is uh, basically take our previous example where we used the command line to perform the function discovery for the cooling of, uh, of the coffee in a pot and now change that into a script so that we can achieve the same result but by running one single command. Right? Okay, so, so let's go through um, scripting. Now in order to write a script first, uh, what you should do is to make sure that your command line is being opened in any suitable directory uh, where you are going to create the script. So you can check your current directory uh, on the top left on the Octave window and change it to the directory you want. Right? Next, move to the editor window of Octave and create a file name uh, like that shown here. Coffee underscore cooling underscore plots dot m. Okay, and, uh, and since we have this is the first time we're creating a file name, here are some important tips on creating file names in, uh, in terms of their conventions in Octave and MATLAB. First, the dot m signifies that this is a MATLAB executable file or an Octave executable file. So it is one that will run its commands when you call uh, call this file uh, from the command line. The next thing is that file names cannot begin with a number like one, right? So one vector dot m is not a valid file name in MATLAB or Octave. Other is uh, don't use uppercase or capital case words. Use lowercase uh, uh, words. Okay? Uh, you can use underscores, but don't use dash, right? And this leads to error. So you might actually see that you you open a file name uh, which has a dash in it as a name, and that's doing nothing on your command line. And uh, you might not actually uh, be confused, but really what's going on is that uh, it doesn't understand this dash. Okay. And then finally, you cannot use the same names uh, that have uh, that are those of existing functions in Octave and MATLAB. Okay. So with that, let's get started. Now remember, in your previous lesson, you entered a variety of commands to the command line uh, into the file that you uh, in, into into uh, so that you could do uh, create the linear parallel and exponential plots uh, in terms of uh, linear uh, uh, straight line behaviors, and then visually observe to see which uh, which one gives you the best straight line. Right? So uh, let's now do that into this file that you have created. Now in my case, I've actually included additional commands here for you to see uh, what I'm doing. And you can do this by either using the number sign or the percentage sign. And that tells you that this part of the script is not to be executed. So my first command was creating the time array followed by the temperature array. And I put uh, semicolons here to make sure that when I run this command, it doesn't print out these values uh, and take up space. Then I begin by creating my linear plot as shown here, followed by uh, followed by uh, the semi-log plot and the log-log plot, right? 
So if you do this successfully, and uh, then you go back to your command line and run the file name that you saved it as coffee underscore cooling underscore plots. Uh, make sure you don't include the dot m here when you're calling the file name uh, because that is when it is uh, a call uh, to make it run. Okay. So if everything was successful, you should be able to see. So I have run the command here on the command line uh, by calling that file name and it has run and it has created all three plots. So if you've done this, well, congratulations because you have successfully created and run your first script and, and from this you can see that your uh, semi-log plot looks like the best linear curve uh, that uh, here as compared to the, the uh, linear linear curve or uh, the log log curve, right? So our final step is to actually now uh, do the fitting process so we can uh, create um, we can find uh, the intercept and the slope for uh, the exponential function. So again, this is a typo here. It should just be m start time. What we'll do is we will uh, open up that original file in the in the editor window, and now we're going to rename it as a new file called coffee underscore cooling underscore fit, and just uh, continue on from where we left off. Right. And what I'm doing is now I'm just entering the polyfit function commands. That we uh, that we did in our last lesson on the command line, but now I have actually included it directly into my uh, script here, script file here, and you can see the command is given here on line 22, uh, along with some information here telling you what is going on, right? And then finally, I also put m equals p uh, bracket one without a semicolon, so I can output the value of m, and similarly I can output the value of uh, uh, the uh, the intercept B. Okay. So once you do this, uh, go ahead and run coffee underscore cooling underscore fit. And if you're successful, then you should see the three plots appear. And also you should see that M and B values have been printed out uh, as, as these two values right here. Okay. And so that means your final function now is given by this exponential behavior uh, as described here. So Congratulations then, uh, at this point you have successfully discovered uh, an engineering behavior through Octave scripting process. Okay, so now with that experience, uh, you are going to f solve the following function as part of your lab activity. So you have a coffee pot here that is placed under a faucet and uh, filled up to the 15 cup line. And when the outlet valve is open, the faucet's flow rate F is adjusted so that the water level remains constant to 15 cups and the time for one cup to flow out of the pot is measured right and so this experiment is repeated with the pot filled to various levels shown in the table and here's a table of data so you have uh, 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 it filled to 15 cups and the time it takes to fill one cup is six seconds when it's filled to 12 cups time it takes to fill one cup is seven seconds and so on and so forth right Okay, so what you need to do now using Octave scripting is the solution to the question that's posed here and, uh, and make sure that uh, your final file is going to contain uh, the script, any figures, and also the final solution. So the first thing you're going to obtain is a function that relates the flow rate V in cups per second uh, and the number of cups in the plot using Octave and the function discovery approach, right? And then the second part is that you, uh, the manufacturer that you're working for wants to make a 36 pot coffee cup using the same outlet valve, but uh, is concerned that the cup will fill too quickly, causing spills, right? Remember, you start out with uh, some number of, uh, with some volume in the coffee pot and, uh, and the outlet valve then fills the coffee cup based on that outlet, uh, based on the uh, initial volume. And so if I now fill it up to 36 parts, uh, is it going to take me uh, uh, too short a time to fill the coffee cup leading to spills? So that's what you will have to now uh, figure out using, uh, using your Octave scripting process. Okay. All right, so with that, uh, we wrap up this first uh, exploration into Octave and we will get back to it later on when we do signal processing. Thank you.